So today's yin practice is all about the liver and gallbladder meridians. So we'll take a lot of things that kind of focus on the outside of the hip um, and the hip area, which is where those meridian lines are located. Um, just a couple things you might need for your practice. I always, once again, for yin practices, suggest that you have a blanket underneath just to give you a little bit of padding and comfort. Um, and also either a blanket uh, like this one or a folded up or beach towel folds up maybe three times so it's got a little bit of height on it for a little bit later on but you can put that off to the side for now we're going to start coming down onto our backs lucy's here to help okay so just taking a few moments here walk your feet a little bit wider drop your knees together arms out to the side take some nice deep breaths Start to even out your breath, lengthen your inhale and exhale, maybe making them a little bit longer and perhaps lengthening your exhale just a little bit more than your inhale just to start that relaxation process. Bring yourself to the present moment, whatever may have happened before, whatever may be coming up. This is the time for yourself to take care of yourself. When we look at all of these meridians in yin, we look at balancing and finding balance, helping clear any areas that have maybe gotten stuck, allowing that energy to run and flow freely from one end of the meridian, usually starting or ending in your feet, all the way higher up into the chest and or crown of the head. The meridian lines are often linked to major organ systems such as the liver and gallbladder. Your liver serves to detoxify, help clean, help filter, help process certain foods. Go ahead and taking the arms out a little bit wider, palms flat, rest your shoulder blades underneath. You're gonna lift your hips and shift them a little bit over to the right, cross that right leg over that left. You can tuck that right toe right behind that left leg or not, it sort of depends on your comfort level. But wherever you're at, go ahead and drop those knees over to the left side. So you can turn and look over your right shoulder or you can look straight up. Take some nice deep breaths here. This is twisted roots pose. Really great, great twist for the liver and gallbladder meridians and a really great twist. Twist, today is twist day. It's the fourth. <laughs> the twist for the outside of the hip as well. So if you have any IT band or TFL issues, a lot of runners have those. Then this is a great way to sort of stretch that connective tissue on the outside of the leg. So take some nice deep breaths. And I always first feel at the beginning of this pose a lot of a lot of my twist kind of happens where it's a little muscle engagement because I'm a little tight, so I'm attempting to protect things and so my muscles sort of seize up a little. Taking a few breaths into that space, maybe allow your back to lengthen out a little bit more. Allow that right hip to drop toward your toes. You can close your eyes. Take maybe another 10 deep breaths.
as you begin to sink into the practice, you find that your breath slows down a little. Maybe your inhale and exhale lengthen out. Last deep breath. Begin to turn your head back to center. Go engage your core and lift those legs back to the middle. Shift them right back down the center and just hug the knees into the chest here. Drop those legs down, unwind right from left. Pick up your hips and shift them a little over to the left. Wrap that left leg around the right. And once again, you can tuck those toes behind or some mid range between here, like your ankle, your toes, or just cross over. Arms out to the side, palms up. Drop those knees over to the right. Make sure that both shoulders are staying on the floor. You can turn your head over to the left. Start to close your eyes and breathe into the space of that left hip, left outer leg. Starting to notice the breath, lengthening out. Maybe you begin to feel that that left shoulder gets a little heavier and that left knee gets a little heavier over to the right side. Just about 10 more deep breaths here. Really starting to feel the weight of that left knee kind of taking the legs over. Deepening that stretch into the tissue of the left hip. And last deep breath. Turn your head to look back up at the ceiling. Engage your core and pull those knees back to center. Shift them right down the middle and pull those knees into the chest. Give them a little squeeze. and then drop those feet down, unwind. Slowly roll yourself over to the right and make your way up onto hands and knees. I'll try not to disturb Lucy too much here. There's just a few cat cows here. Dropping the belly down, lifting the chin, exhaling, arch and round. Inhale, tilt. And two more at your own breath pace. Then 
and coming back to center. You're gonna bring that right knee over to that right wrist and set up for pigeon pose. So we're gonna stay up high in our pigeon pose. So let's get ourselves set up really well here. You're gonna walk that left leg back, flip the toes over, drop that left hip, pull that foot towards you just a little bit. Fingertips or fists, or if your arms are nice and long, which mine are not, you can take your palms flat on the floor. Lift up nice and tall here. No muscles here though. This is a very different pigeon than your normal yang class. So sort of relax the hips down, kind of sink into the back bend that exists naturally in this pose. And let the hips get really, really heavy. Sink toward the floor, wherever they may go. And some people will naturally have their hips sink really close to the floor, and some people will not. That's okay. And then go ahead and start to very slowly lower down. This is where I kind of take that knee out just a little bit further maybe. Start to lower down. If you're comfortable here or with your hands on flat on the ground, forearms, or you can lay all the way flat. I kind of like this position because I can kind of pull the mat to me, lengthen out through the spine, and then fold forward a little bit more. Always think a long spine in this forward fold. And while you're definitely getting a lot of stretch in the outside of the right hip and the front of the left thigh, you're still also getting a nice back lengthener here too. So sort of a blend of Sphinx pose with pigeon. We call this sleeping pigeon. Just allow those hips to get even heavier. If your knee gives you any trouble in this posture, you can always take an alternative to this, which is to roll to the outside edge of that right hip and fold forward. Or you can take a laying on your back version. Um, I find usually that if you roll to the outside edge of the hip, that usually feels pretty good for people with knee issues. And just five more deep breaths. And then start to press into the palms and come all the way back up. Go ahead and shift that right leg back. Maybe take a moment here in child's pose. The knees closer together. And then rocking forward, we're gonna switch sides. Take that left knee over to that left wrist, walk your right foot back a little bit. Look back and make sure it's right out behind you from that hip. And then kind of pull that leg to you a little bit, drop that right hip. Once again, you can come up on the fingertips or fists. I like being a little bit higher up, so I can sort of let this settle down a little bit lower, the pelvis drop. 
that is entirely up to you. No muscle engagement here, just relax into the hips, relax into the back, allow the natural back bend that occurs here. We're enjoying some very mild, sunny weather in Texas today. And I think every bird on the planet is outside. So if you hear birds in the background, I have a lot of very friendly birds. Just three more deep breaths here. Really trying to drop those shoulders away from the ears. Let the hips get heavy. Then start to walk your hands out to wherever you feel comfortable. Once again, using that mat to kind of pull yourself a little bit forward, lengthening the spine and dropping down. Think about releasing the action of the legs. Sometimes they tense up once again in this pose because you're trying to really get length. Just relax that right hip, right hamstring. Just about three more deep breaths here. And start to press yourself back up. Walk those hands in. Shift that left leg back. Maybe take a little bit wider child's pose here. Toes together, knees apart. And relax your head on your hands. and come all the way up to a seat. Go ahead and reach out for that second prop that we were talking about at the very beginning. I'm gonna set that up right behind you and we're gonna come into shoelace pose or what you familiarly know as cow face pose. So in cow face pose, some of the easiest ways to get into it is to kind of take your right leg, cross it around your left, and sit back. So some people will be able to get all the way down to the floor. Some people will not. And for that, we kind of use that blanket, sort of tuck it in between the hips and the heel. If you have really open hips and you can rotate outward more, you can take the feet off to the side if that's comfortable for you. But this is kind of it for me. Sit up nice and tall and start to kind of fold forward. Now, as you fold forward, let your hips get really, really heavy behind you. So if they stay very well stable on the floor and you get a little bit of heaviness back there. Think long spine and lift up through your chin and then sort of start to lower down. 
If you find you can bring yourself all the way down onto your forearms and or your forehead, then go ahead and go as far as you feel sensation um, without pain. And as far as your body will do without your pushing it. So once again, we're not trying to fold any deeper. We're just sort of letting it happen. So for me, it stops at about here. Any further would require probably a little bit of muscle engagement, which we're trying to not do here. I always feel a lot of sensation in this pose. Um, if you're someone who doesn't feel a huge amount, know that it is still working, even if you don't feel a lot. Uh, but for those of us who have tighter outside hip compartments, this is a great pose. We're just gonna be here for about two minutes. Got about a minute and a half left. In yin, you may find that a lot of emotional content comes up in your poses. And sometimes you think to yourself, I'm really frustrated, or I'm really angry, or I really hate this pose, or I wish we'd really come out of it faster, or I wish she'd stop doing that. And a lot of that has less to do with the pose itself and maybe some of the emotions that are getting released because of stretching this connective tissue and releasing it. So I often tell people that connective tissue, the largest amount of it is between about mid thigh and belly button. This is why we focus on these areas in particular. And that we carry a lot of our emotional baggage in the connective tissue. So when you mobilize it a little bit, you will release some things. My belief is that it is always better out than in. So I'm much happier letting it go than keeping it there. Go ahead and take one more deep breath here. Start to walk yourself back up. You're gonna lean over to the left, take that left palm down, take that right arm up and over, stretch. Just five breaths here. And then back up to center. Take that blanket out from underneath you. You're gonna rock forward. Untie those legs for just a moment. Sit back just for a second here in Thunderbolt Pose. Your heels, let's try that again. It's not even Monday. Heels underneath the hips. It's good to take a little break in between each yin posture and just sort of check in with yourself. Notice the sensations on one side of the body. And if you have a two-sided posture, it's really important to sort of feel what happened on one side and feel the difference between the two sides. That's how you kind of know what's going on. So go ahead and rock forward. You're gonna cross that left over right. So recognizing that we are not butterflies and that our bodies are different on each side, know that this side may feel very different for you and it may act very different. So recognizing that happens and it's okay. Sit up nice and tall, sink into those hips and let them get really, really heavy. Go ahead and start to walk your fingertips forward and fold to where you naturally just sort of gravitationally come down. Feel that left hip getting super heavy. Just 
Just breathing into those sensations that come up, those emotions that come up. Knowing that in every pose, the pose will come to an end. And that if you really want out of it, you will get out of it at some point. About halfway here, maybe another 10 breaths. And last deep breath. Inhale, walk back up to center. Drop that right hand over to the right. Lean over and let that left hand come with you. Inhale back to center, rock forward, unwind those legs, come back to your thunderbolt pose. A couple of breaths here, noticing the evening out of each side, paying attention to the sensations on your left side. If you feel a little bit of something going on in the back of your calf muscles because of the crossover, that's okay too. Don't worry, they'll kind of shake out a little bit. Um, it does help kind of iron the calf muscles out in those poses. So keeping our blanket where it's at, you're going to sit on the very edge of the blanket so you get a little bit of a pelvic tilt. Sometimes you can roll it up a little bit taller if you're like me and tend to have a little bit of kind of a rounded back at the very back. You can always go wider, and I can, but I like to kind of, for yin, take a little bit more moderate approach because you're going to be holding it a lot longer. Sit up nice and tall. We're just going to start with sort of a twisted pose. You're going to turn yourself a little bit over to the left. You're going to lean over and fold over that left leg. So remembering to keep your toes really loose and letting the toes roll in or out wherever they kind of want to go. I like to bounce my knee a little bit. If this is a huge amount on your knees, you can always take like a blanket or a rolled up towel underneath the knees to prop them upwards a little bit and release some of the tension behind the hamstring and the knee but this feels okay for me for today. Wherever your body comes down to, relax. If you're someone who tends to wanna to push really hard and sort of stretch a little bit further, um, I suggest you take your hands palms up so that you're not pulling on something. This kind of prevents you from using the muscle engagement or trying to go where your body doesn't wanna go. And just relax. Maybe your knee gets a little bit softer. Just about 10 more deep breaths in this side.
and turn your palms over if they're upside push all the way up to center come back to the middle take your hands around behind you and just lean back a little back bend here lift the chest and lift the chin and then coming back to center switch sides so once again you may find this side is harder or easier for you turn yourself over to the right fold over that right leg for me this might be a little bit harder because i have more flexibility in my left side than in my right once again you go where you can go kind of relax those muscles bounce the knee a little bit wiggle the toes find like I'm finding that maybe lifting up the back of the knee and bending it gives me a little bit more relaxation in these muscles because I can watch them sort of tensing and if that's the case then go ahead and just bend that knee and tuck something underneath if you want or not Maybe 10 more deep breaths. Start to walk your hands back up. Sit up for a breath or two here, just checking in with yourself, seeing how everything's doing, maybe wiggling the feet a little bit, the toes bouncing the knees. And we're just gonna take like a one minute forward fold in this posture. So go ahead and walk your hands out. Remember that in yin, we're allowed to kind of curve the upper back over. Just start to walk yourself all the way back up. Take those hands around behind you again. Lift the chest, drop the chin back. Take three deep breaths. Come back to center. Reach inside your left knee. Fold that in, reach inside your right, fold it in. Take a breath here in butterfly pose, maybe waving your butterfly wings a little bit. And just checking in, taking some nice deep breaths, coming back to that soft, longer exhale. We're gonna go ahead and come down onto our belly. So bring those knees together. Come all the way down onto the belly for Sphinx and Seal Pose. So 
I like to bring the palms together, outside edges of the fingers on the floor, pressing into the forearms. You can take your elbows directly below your shoulders or you can move them out a little bit further if that feels better for you. Okay. Relax your hips. So if you wiggle them out a little bit, wave your toes, let your heels fall out to the side or inside, whatever feels comfortable for you. And then you're gonna kind of pull a little bit like you normally do in Sphinx and then kind of sink. So sort of sinking action. So if you have any issues where your shoulders just don't feel good when you slump really heavily, you can keep a little bit of pressure through the forearms and the elbows lifting up so it's about halfway. If that's not a problem for you, you can drop down in between the shoulder blades. We refer to this as slumping. Engage the belly button just a little bit enough to sort of protect that lower back from overbending. You can look straight ahead or down at your thumbs. You can drop your chin to your chest if that feels good. Try to keep those shoulders away from the ears. Very soft legs, very soft glutes. And then you can either stay here for another minute, or you can take your hands out to the side, turn the fingers out, thumbs kind of facing forward, and lift into seal pose. So if you feel yourself starting to tense up your muscles in your glutes or your legs, come down a little bit lower. Drop the belly down, keep a little bit of engagement, roll the shoulders down away from the ears, look straight down at the floor in front of you. Very slowly bend your elbows, cross your hands in front of you, rest your forehead on the backs of your hands. And then make your way back up to a seat. So our next pose is square pose and I particularly struggle with this pose just because of rotation of the hips. So I really prop myself up very high. So I'm gonna show you the different options and you can kind of judge from there. So I like to take my first leg out. So we're gonna start with left, flex the toes, line up this front shin with the front of your mat or the front of your blanket, wherever you're at. Cross that right over. Start to shift yourself forward my blanket with me. What you want to do ultimately is to have flexed toes and have your heels underneath each knee. Now if your knees go all the way down to the floor and that feels really comfortable for you, there is another choice. This is officially fire log pose in a normal practice. So if you feel like these knees are really close to the floor, and I mean they are laying on the floor because we want it to be safe, you can take the top ankle and put it on the opposite knee and stay here, stacking both legs, both shins on top of one another. This is not available to me. I work with what I have. But try to keep that flexion so you don't want these kind of, it's not really a cross-legged pose, it's stacking them in front of each other if you can't achieve the other version. Keeping the toes flexed. 
I like to sort of lean down, keep my arms ro rolling down the knees until I hit the floor. If you like, you can take your chin onto your hands and your elbows onto your knees. A little bit of weight to kind of get those knees down a little bit closer. And then release the tension in the ankles and the toes. If you can go a lot further, you can go ahead and walk your hands out and fold all the way down to wherever you feel comfortable, resting your arms wherever you want. You want to feel a certain amount of sensation. So in yin practice, what you're looking for is to feel sort of a tractioning effect, sort of a traction of the connective tissue. You don't want to feel sharp or shooting pain. You don't want to feel um, a really harsh ache. You want to feel as if something is kind of pulling very slowly apart, okay? So we're not tearing anything. <laughs> we're just kind of making it a little bit more malleable. So yin is a lot like traction. If you've ever seen somebody in traction, is a long-term basically using a pulling system to sort of help things heal back at a certain way. And so traction takes a long time, which is why yin postures tend to be held quite a bit longer than your typical hatha yoga or vinyasa flow practice. The benefits to this yin practice is not only just the emphasis on the meridians um, and balancing that, but it's also helping this tissue remain moister, more malleable, more supple, um, which leads to eventually less injury, a little bit more range of, mo range of motion, a little bit more mobility long-term. If you are new to yin, then what it can do for your normal yoga practice or weightlifting or workouts is that it can make it a little safer less injury prone and it can give you a little bit more range of motion a little bit more control so lots of benefits to yin take about five more deep breaths here this is often the pose that a lot of people are get frustrated and want out really fast Take your hands down to the floor, start to press up. Unwind those feet, take them a little bit wider. Rock the knees side to side, little windshield wiper here. So I am a huge proponent of yin because I have seen dramatic results in my own practice and in the practice of my students who practice yin with me as well as vinyasa flow. some injury reduction. So when you fall and your connective tissue is very brittle, there's a much higher chance of breaking bone or pulling muscles or tearing areas. Um, when it is supple, when you fall, lessens the chance of a, of a harder injury, a longer term healing injury. Okay, so switching sides. Take that right foot once again, line it up, that shin with the front of your mat. Take that left, creeping closer and closer. <sighs> Tuck it in, get yourself lined up. So I like to take a little bit of time to get this pose really where I want it to be. If you have the knees down, you can take that left heel or ankle on top of that opposite right one. You wanna still keep that flexion in the foot though. You don't want that kind of sold it over foot. Sit up tall and start to slide yourself down. You might find one side is a little bit easier than the other. This for me is an easier side. Once again, taking your hands, palms forward, you can rest your chin on your hands and your elbows on your knees or some middle ground between that. Find that sort of 65% for you, not the 100% I'm pushing, 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 but that 65%, a little bit of effort 
a 35% sort of letting gravity be the ease. So here's when you really look at how much effort you're putting into yin poses is pulling back just a little bit, letting gravity take you where it needs to go. A little more than halfway through here. And start to press yourself all the way back up. Take the hands behind you. Take those legs out in front of you again and just windshield wiper side to side. It's great practice here for the outside of the leg. If you're a runner who has some TFL and IT band issues, sort of a great way to stretch those. And then our final pose is Shavasana. So go ahead and roll down onto your back. You can either take your feet wide and drop the knees together, or you can walk your heels out to the corners of the mat. Take your arms out nice and wide, tuck the shoulder blades underneath. <sighs> Close your eyes and start to relax into the floor. Sort of checking in with your body. Allowing your breath to be unregulated and natural. As always, if you have a little bit more time and would like to spend more time in Shavasana, you can stay here as long as you need to. If you are headed on to something else and ready to move on, very slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes, carefully bending one knee at a time, bringing the feet flat to the floor. And on your next inhale, take your arms up overhead, stretch through your fingertips and lengthen your spine and exhale, gently roll over onto your right side. Take a few moments here on your right side just to allow your blood pressure to come back to normal. To return to your natural breath, maybe lengthening it out just a little bit more in the exhale. And then pressing yourself up using that left hand. Come into whatever seated position you like best. I like to end my yin practice with a little bit of meditation, a little bit of breath awareness.
Taking three more deep breaths. Gently bring your hands to your heart. Peace and Namaste. If you enjoyed this practice and are interested in more yin practices, I have several other covering other meridian lines, meridian pairs of the body on the YouTube channel. So please check those out. And as always, I know that your time is precious and you could be doing a lot of other things and spending it with a lot of other people. And I thank you for taking the time to spend it here with me at the Yoga Ranger Studio on YouTube. Um, if you are local in Rockwall or in Dallas area in Texas, please feel free to come on by. My address is on my website at www.theyogaranger.com. If not, I look forward to seeing you more on YouTube. Take care and have a great day.